This is just like a slope field FRQ, but there's a couple of questions here combined. Uh, all right, so the first thing they do is they give us a differential equation, and then this says on the axes provided, sketch the slope field for the given differential equation. How do you sketch a slope field? What you do is you take every single point on this graph, and you're going to plug it into the XY right here, and that'll be the slope at that point. So, uh, for example, let's take that very first top left one right here. That would be negative 2 up to positive 2. So negative 2, positive 2. If I plug that in to my differential equation, I'm going to get negative 2 times 2, and then divide it by 2. That would give me, that's negative 4 divided by 2 would be negative 2. So we have a slope of negative 2 at that point. So I'm going to go to that point, and I'm going to graph a line at negative 2 it should be going down. Now that's a little baby tangent line and you're gonna do this uh, for every single point. So you're gonna do it for negative 2, 1. You're gonna do it for negative 2, 0. You're gonna do it for negative 2, negative 1. And you're gonna get each one of those, you're gonna get a point. Okay, so for this one I'm going to get uh, negative 2 times 1 divided by 2, so that's going to be negative 2 divided by 2, which would be negative 1. This one is nice because we go negative 2 times 0 divided by 2, so you're just going to get 0 for that one. And this last one right here, we have negative 2 times negative 1, and you would get, um, that's positive 2, positive 1. So if I, if I uh, do a baby tangent line for each of those, that would be, uh, that's kind of like negative 1 right there. And then the next one is 0, so it's a horizontal line, and then we have a positive uh, a positive one. So I did each of those points and I wrote it out so you guys can see it but for the rest of them I'm gonna do in my head. Alright so I'm looking for patterns here. Now every single one of these points on the x-axis has a zero for the x. No sorry a zero for the y. Which means we're gonna have a zero on the top and zero divided by two is gonna be zero so all of these points right here have a horizontal uh, baby tangent line on it. Okay and then the same thing is going to happen for every point that's on the y-axis because on every point in the y-axis the x equals zero so that means you're going to get zero on the top again. So I should have uh, horizontal baby tangents for all of those. All right now for the rest of these points I'm going to have to plug them in. I'll probably do most of them in my head but let me uh, throw them up there for you guys. So there's the rest of your baby tangent lines. Uh, I want you guys to notice um, that you notice there's a difference. I mean, this one, actually, I, it's hard for me to notice a difference right here, but because I'm noticing differences right here in the steepness of the baby tangent lines, this, is, this would be marked correct. Okay, do you guys see that? Um, you just got to find um, the slope at each point and draw a little baby tangent line for that. All right, let's look at B. Let F be the function that satisfies a differential equation. What the heck did that just say? Now, I want you guys to read this again. Um, and I, then I'll explain it. Let f be the function that satisfies the given differential equation. So what this just said is that f is an answer for this. And an answer to a differential equation is an equation. You know how we separate the variables and do the antiderivative and stuff on that? That's what this is talking about. Okay, so we have this function f that is um, a solution to the differential equation. That's all it says. Write an equation for the tangent line to the curve, y equals f. Okay, so a tangent line, a tangent line to this f right here. So we got to do a tangent line to this f at this point, 1, 1. Then, okay, and it says then, then use your tangent line equation to estimate the value of this. Guys, this topic right here is called linear approximation. It doesn't say that, but... If you understood a linear approximation, then you would understand that this uh, is that type of problem. Because it says, find a tangent line, and then it says estimate. Therefore, this is a linear approximation problem. Okay, I'm going to go into a quick little side explanation of linear approximation, just in case you guys forgot. So, let's say I have this curve right here. Whoop, there's my curve. All right, and then I have this, uh, this value right here, this x value. When I plug in this x value, I get this point, which gives me this y value. Okay, you guys still with me? Okay, we're going to call this function f. Kind of like the f that they're talking about right here. So here is a curve, and we're calling this curve f. But for some reason, um, it would be really hard for us to find out what y value this function, or this value right here would be. Okay, now I'm writing it kind of weird. I'm writing the x sub 1 again, but I'm adding a change in x. That's delta x. So 
when we add that, we're moving over this way, and so I want to plug this in. Remember, if I plugged in x sub 1, I would get y sub 1. So the question is, what would you get if you plugged in x sub 1 plus delta x, which is another x value to the right of x sub 1? What would you get? Okay, so if I, if I knew what f was, I could just plug this into f and find out the actual value, which would be right there on the curve. But what if for some reason you couldn't? What if you couldn't plug it into f because you didn't know what f was? Check this out. <clears throat> you can make a tangent line at the point that you do know. And then you can plug this into the tangent line equation and you would get this point right here, which is actually pretty dang close to the actual one. Do you guys see that? See how they're close? Yeah. The farther away I get from x of 1, the the lines start separating, and the estimate isn't that good anymore. This is called linear approximation. So if this tangent line looks something like this, y equals, <clears throat> I don't know, we'll put a slope right here. We'll put the x minus x sub 2, because it has to be different than x sub 1, plus um, a y value. Actually, um, let's say, oh, we, let's say we use that point x of 1. So we would have x of 1 in here, which would be actually be x minus x of 1, and then you would go uh, plus y sub 1. So this is actually the tangent line that, that, you would, that you would create. It should look really familiar, because if I move that y sub 1 to the other side, what form does this look like? Now this is point-slope form, and it's the algebra way to write point-slope form. Uh, there's a calculus way to write it, but that's, that's beside the point. We don't care about that right now. If you move this to the other side, you get y equals, and this is a tangent line equation. Now check this out. x sub 1 is something we know, right? That's that guy right there. And when we plug in x sub 1, we get y sub 1. That's something we know, okay? So what is this x right here? This would be the new x that we plug in. And what you would do is you would take that new x that you plug in, you subtract the y sub 1, multiply it by the slope, and then you would take whatever your result you got, and you would add it to the, the old y value, and that would give you an approximate new y value. It's an approximation. It's an estimation. It's not exact. So that's exactly what we're going to do with this problem right here. There's our point. It's not x1, y1. It is 1, 1. And... Where's our slope? How are we going to find our slope? Oh, yeah. We plug the 1, 1 into this, the slope, the differential equation, and that'll give us the slope at that point. So let's write, let's write our tangent line equation. It would be y minus 1, because remember, it's, it's 1, 1. And then we would say equals, um, okay, and we need our slope right there. We're going to go x minus 1 uh, because of that 1. But let's get our slope right here. Uh, if I plug 1, 1 into this, what would we get? 1 half. Okay, so there you have it, people. This is our tangent line equation, 1 half, and then we have an x minus 1, and then we have a plus 1. Okay, so how would I approximate this, uh, f of 1.2? To get an approximate answer, I'm going to plug that 1.2 into this. And so let's write it out. We have 1 half times 1.2 minus 1, and then we're going to add 1 to that result. Uh, when I subtract these, I get 0 0.2. And now since I have a 0 0.2, uh, let's make this a 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 0 0.2, 5 times 2 is 10. So I put 10, and I have to move the decimal over 1, 2 times. And so I move the decimal over twice. Now I don't need to see that 0 there anymore. So I have 0 0.1, and then I have plus 1, which then would approximately equal 1.1. Well, that would actually would exactly equal 1.1, but this y value is approximately equal to 1.1. And that's your answer for letter B. All right, so letter C says, find the particular solution, of, which is this. Remember, we were, we were introduced to F earlier. To the differential equation with the initial condition. Oh, we got initial condition. I know what that means. Uh, F of 1, 1. Hey, that's the same point as 1, 1. Huh, okay, why do they write it weird like that? Use the solution to find the actual value. Whoa, okay, so here we got the estimated value. Here we're going to find the actual value. Let's do this stuff. Okay, so to do this, we're going to have to take our differential equation and separate the variables. Uh, so what does that look like? We have dy over dx. Oh, this is when things start getting a little dirty. You guys ready to get stanky? You guys ready to get stanky? It's crunchy time. 
All right, we got dx. I'm going to put the dx over here. Uh, and then I'm going to rewrite this just because I don't like the way it looks. I'm going to put dy right there. I'm going to have 1 half times xy. I'm going to take that xy and put it down off of the fraction. Oh, wow, it looks a lot cleaner. And then I'm going to divide both sides by the y. Piece out y, and then I divide this side by y. And so now I have something that looks like this. 1 over y dy equals 1 half x dx. There's other ways to write this, people. I'm just writing it this way because I think it's most understandable this way for those who are newbies at this. All right, we're going to integrate both sides. So if I take the integral of 1 over y, it's going to be natural log of y uh, plus c because we don't have an, a lower and upper bound. We have to make sure we have our constant in there. And then we have um, this guy over here. We have to add 1 to that exponent. So it's going to be x to the second power. And then we have 1 half just chilling. Then we have to divide by 2. Oh, dang. What is 1 half divided by 2? 1 fourth. That's the same as 1 half times 1 half. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And then we have plus d. How come d? Yeah, because we have to have a constant because it's an indefinite integral. Uh, but then we're going to end up subtracting the c from both sides anyways. And so we're just going to write natural log of y equals 1 over 4x to the second power plus c. What? d minus c is plus c? Yes, because, you know, when you subtract a constant from a constant, you just get another constant. All right, let's finish getting y alone. We're going to raise both sides to the base e so that those cancel out and e is left alone, or y is left alone. So we have e raised to the 1 fourth. Actually, let's simplify the way we write that. x to the second power divided by 4 plus c. That, all that stuff is inside of our exponent. Now this right here is called a general solution to our differential equation. It is not a particular solution. If you want this to be a particular solution, you must find that c. I found it right there. No, that, not that kind of find. We have to take this point and plug it into the x and the y. Alright, so let's do that. So I'm going to plug in 1 for that y, and I'm going to plug in 1 for that x to find c. All right, let's simplify stuff. <clears throat> uh, we don't need you anymore squared because 1 squared is just the same. You don't do anything. And then we're going to natural log both sides. If I natural log that side and natural log that side, the e goes away here, and I have a natural log of 1 equals 1 over 4 plus c. Oh, snap. Natural log of 1. Do you guys know what that is? Natural log of 1. Remember, that is a log base e of 1. That means what power would you raise e to to get 1? Zero. So natural log of 1 is? Zero. Uh, 1 fourth plus c. So what does c equal? c equals negative 1 fourth. So where's my particular solution? Let's go over here where we have space and write it out. We have y. I'm going to take this c and plug it into there to get my particular solution. y equals e to the x squared divided by 4 minus 1 fourth. There's your particular solution. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this 1.2 and plug it into this to find an exact answer to that. So f of 1.2 would look like this, e to the 1.2 squared divided by 4, and then we're going to subtract 1 fourth from that. Let's use our calculator, shall we? All right, when you plug it in, this is what you get. Uh, don't forget to use these parentheses up here. That's 1.2 to the second power divided by 4. Now, I have math print, so yours might not look like this. Minus 1 fourth, and this is our answer. 1.11627807. Oh, man. Let's do, let's do the rounding thing. Let's go three decimal places and round it. So that would be 1.116. Okay. So our answer is 1.116. This is our actual <coughs> answer. Oh, wow. That is the answer to that. <clears throat> okay, compare your estimate of f of 1.2, that's this one, from part b, to the actual value of f of 1.2, found in part, hey, how come there's nothing there? That should be part c. It should say part c right there. Let's, let's write part c. Put a little c right here, part c. Okay. No, that is not a question, it's a command. All right, we got to com uh, compare those two. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 1.1 and that, and subtract them. Let's just find a difference between the two. Uh, let's see, that would be uh, D. <coughs> Alright, so we're gonna go um, 1.116 and then 1.1. I subtract, oh yay, check that out. I get 6, and there's a 1 right there. That's a 0, and point zero. Okay, look at that. So hey, which number is bigger, this one or this one? The actual one is bigger. That's interesting. Okay, now this one says, was your estimate from part B an underestimate or an overestimate? Well, you guys tell me. It was an underestimate. That number is smaller than that one, 
So therefore, it was an underestimate. Let's underline that really quick. It was an underestimate. <clears throat> use your slope field to explain why. Here's my slope field. We're going to use it to explain why. Okay, now I want to draw this particular solution. This, this particular solution right here, this guy, e to the x squared divided by 4 minus 1 fourth. I want to draw it over here. And it's going to be a really, really rough um, drawing. We have to go through 1, 1. So 1, 1 is right here. And I'm going to go wee like that and then out like that. And it looks like it kind of starts going up. Okay, so 1.2 would be right about here, right? If this, this is 1.2 right there. Look, look at this. If that's 1.2, our estimate is underneath this curve. Right, our estimate is 1.1. The curve is actually at 1.116. The estimate is underneath the curve. Why would our estimate be an underestimate? This is what you say. A, B, C, D, E. It is an underestimate. Actually, I don't think I need to write that part. Oh, wait, no, I do. I have to say it's an underestimate. Under estimate oh running out of space underestimate because f is concave up ooh what's another way to say that instead of having to write f is concave up you guys know another way to say that f double prime is greater than zero so i could have not wrote the, any of this and just wrote f double prime is greater than zero 